Hello, welcome to another video from Micro Rooster. Today's topic will be heat map. There are multiple ways to create heat maps. Obviously, there's going to be in the desktop, the web, and with the visual analytics or analytics version. So what is a heat map in concept? It's a heat map is a collection of rectangles. Each rectangle represents an element, for, for example, a category or a product or a country or whatever you want set of elements can be grouped together. Again, the size and the color are determined by metrics. So you can have two up to two metrics that determine the color and the size, and any more metrics on your report will be just uh, embedded in your tooltips. So let's go ahead and start. I created a data set that I'm gonna use. So let's look at this data set quickly. Let's run it and then I'll show It has category, subcategory, and three metrics units sold revenue profit it is using a page by of the year okay so again it's very simple it's got two attributes they belong to the same hierarchy if we render in a graph form i kind of modified it a little bit i changed the profit i gave the profit a separate axis uh sorry i gave the number count uh, a separate axis to show the units sold in blue and then the red bars were showing the revenue with a, and I changed the series here for a yellow line. So obviously this is a good graph, you know, might fit with my needs. But sometimes when you want to go into a more interactive and more uh, visual mode, you might you might be able to capture the same information using a, uh, a heat map and get more results. So looking at this one, you might see a trend. Okay, I see revenue going up here. In these products, I see profit also going up. Obviously, I see the number of units sold here are very high compared to their revenue, and here less count compared to the high revenue. Maybe that leads me to some business conclusion. I want to save it? All right. So create a simple blank dashboard here, and I'm going to go here, document dashboard. I'm just going to use something simple. It's asking me for the first data set, and I'm going to use my uh, my data set that I just displayed a second ago. There it is. It's my data set. So I'm just going to drag it here. All right, great. I might want to resize one big heat map here, make life easier for us. I can see that it's dragging everything that I want. Okay, great. Go down to the properties. There's multiple ways to do this, but this is just the straightforward one. Go to widget, and now you get to choose which widget type you want. So you can, it depends on how you want to render it, whether it's a flash or HTML or iPad, depending on your needs. Now, Microsoft lets you uh, select multiples. So let's say I went and I selected flash heat map notice it's saying okay you will be able to render this in flash in iPad and the HTML let's say you didn't want one of these you didn't want it in iPad you can uncheck this default okay and it says alternatively display let's just say placeholder or show grid and graph whatever you want to do it's saying that if you render it in one of these unchecked ones what does it do okay obviously you're not gonna see it here let's just call it Obviously, I didn't do anything fancy. I'm just trying to get to the product. Now I'm going to go to my web, and this is my heat map dashboard. Um, let's just run it for now and see what it does. All right, great. So because we created it correctly, it what what it did it put these subcategories in boxes, and it put the groups. So this was the category group movies, and then everything underneath it in a box and it took the first metric which was size or units sold and used it for the size of the box and then it used revenue for the color okay category subcategory units sold revenue so it just picked up the default design that you had now if you had one less metric it's just gonna uh it's gonna be missing one of those two uh, capabilities like the color or the size and if you're missing one of these you'll just have no grouping okay so it's not a big deal let's go to flash 
Great, so it's rendering in multiple, in Flash and in interactive the HTML. Okay, let's take a look at this. Let's say you wanted to modify the formatting here. Well, the way you do that is you modify the formatting on your grid. So you go back to your mode here, and let's just say for revenue, let me right click it, value two decimals, let's say. All right. So now I have two decimals. Now when I go render it, again, it should be reflective. There we go. We got the decimals. If you hover over any of these, you will see that there's three metrics. There's the units sold, revenue, and profit. Remember I said if there's more than two metrics, uh, those metrics will only show up in the tooltip. So you won't lose that information. It just won't be part of your heat map interactive uh, widget. Well, let me show you something else. If you right click on this, there's two options here, interactive and properties. Let's start with properties, talk about it. Properties allow you to select general stuff. For example, do you want to show the legend or you don't want to show the legend? The legend is was this right here at the bottom. Do you want to show the metric value on the box or not? Maybe, maybe not. Do you want to show labels on the boxes? It's up to you, depending on what your needs. If you have too many boxes and the boxes are too small, you might not want to show labels and just let, let that be a part of the interactivity, the layout. Usually you want to keep readability, but sometimes you might have other needs just to demonstrate different things where the categories or the groups have similar sizes that you want to just show them next to each other. So again, these are design options that you can play with. Format, these are the colors. Uh, it's a little bit interactive, so if I change this to black, the text will change to white. The background color, uh, let's just look at the border color. The border color won't show unless you have multiple things lined up next to each other. Let's just do something like blue. And then there's the metric options. Here's your metrics, and you can change the aggregation if you didn't want it to be a sum, you want it to be like an average or a count or something like else. You could also remove minimums so you see anything less than a certain amount I want to drop it or I can so here we go we have the black header so change this to a white text again it's it's uh, dynamic so it changes the text color here more powerful is this interactive box notice here it's sitting on top but if I click on the dock it'll put it right next to it this, this is a very powerful tool. So the first thing you will see here is the ability to delete items. So I'm gonna click on this X box, and now I, I see these X's on different units. So let's say there's one unit, maybe miscellaneous, that I did not wanna show in my graph. So I can remove it, and there we go, it resizes dynamically. And if I'm not sure which ones I deleted, I can go back here and say, ah, there it is. I've deleted this item. And if I refresh, it'll come right back, okay? And again, you can zoom into one area or another. That's very helpful when you have a lot of boxes. Your, our size was based on the unit sold, but what if our size was, we wanted it to be on, on the revenue instead, the greatest revenue first, and then maybe the unit sold be the color. If we could have changed the order, which in this case doesn't make sense, but if you had multiple, you can change that, or you can re remove grouping altogether. So I'm just gonna move it out here. So I blend all my subcategories. All right, let me close this box. Do you wanna filter? Well, maybe I don't wanna start with anything less than, let's say, I don't know, 1.5 million, and I apply my filter, and there it goes. It drops everything else. Or I remove my filter and it stays. Also with the colors, I can filter which values get dropped, so, all right. Now the blending of the colors, do I want it blended in relative position or absolute? Or do I want it banded? Usually I go with banded unless there's a lot of information that I'm trying to show. But if there's limited number of information, I go with banded. And what I go here and I can drag this maybe at, I don't know, like 30%, let's say. And if I double click, I can change colors. And also I can add different dividers if I click one click so there we go all right so let's just put it somewhere here that's good enough let's just put it at 70% let me 
color this. I'm going to click here to edit the color of this item. Oops. But if you add something by mistake, you can just go and remove it by clicking the X like I did here. I made a mistake. All right, so I click on the color and double clicked on the bar. I'm just going to put yellow. So notice there's arrows. The arrows is showing the fading or the shading. So if I don't want any of that, I'll just click once, reverse it, click another. I also can search for certain items if I'm looking for something specific. Okay, and I can filter by it after I find it. So there you go, these are different controls. Once you're done, you're not satisfied with this, you can reset everything and everything can go back to where it was. So you're not stuck with this, nor the user is. Once you're done with this, you can close it and there's your new design right here, okay? If you create a new dashboard right off here and you choose your data set, here you're using the visual uh, insight, the visualization, it's a little bit easier here. So what you do is you simply say, okay, what do I want on my rows? Well, let me just say category and subcategory. And I want, uh, let's use revenue. And I want units sold. And then I go here and I can change my visualization to a heat map. And this is pretty much identical. It has different defaults, so here it's defaulting a different, uh, in a different color, and you can play with your colors and the thresholds of the colors. It's actually more interactive. It gives you a little bit more options by the gate from the gate, and it gives you a little bit more. Do you want to do it by percent value? Do you want to break it by anything? You can do a repeating category, so you could do it. Say you can by category, and then you apply. So each category in itself has its own variation of color. Well, at the end, once you're done with this, what you could do, you could obviously save it and share it to the standards, the shaving and sharing or presenting it. But you could also, let's do a save. All right, so I'm going to save it here. I'll run it. So I'm going to edit it. Now, once you hover on the edit, it's going to convert to document. It's going to warn you, yes, okay? Now what happens is, I went back to my document setting. It's similar to what we were doing in the desktop, but here I started from the Visual Insight, converted back to the document. Now all my properties pop back again, and I can modify things right off from here. And I have the, the widget itself to play with. If you notice here, if I hover up here, the widget, the view mode is going to be widget. And then I have the properties and formatting that I can play with. For the widget, I can change it again. Here's the heat map, and I have the similar options that I had before. And if I save this, I'm going to save it. I'm just call it 2. And I'll put it in the shared folder again. And save it. And I'll run the save document. Again, this is a lot similar to the previous one now. It's back to the full interactivity uh, and not using the visual insight. But it, you could also have used the visual insight saved version, which I probably saved in my reports right here. And you keep the interactivity of the visual insight component. So again, there's multiple ways to do this. I usually don't use the visual insight except for discovery. Once I'm done, I save it as I convert it as a as a document. That way I have the full control of everything else like the data sets. Or I just start from the desktop. Again, it depends on your preference. As an architect, I prefer to develop everything down here and then move up there. So thanks again for uh, joining us and hopefully you enjoyed learning about heat maps.